Hello everybody, this is Adam from Ice Pack Guides. I hope you're doing well. I'm here on a cold and blowy winter night and I'm looking for a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of warmth as we wait for spring to come and especially for spring training to come. And so what better place to get a little sunshine than in baseball cards. And one of the baseball cards that's always made me smile and brought some joy and, and warmth to the day is this 1983 Donruss um, Cesar Cedeno. Now, this is not an actual Cesar Cedeno. It's um, a picture from the internet that I pulled up. I have this card buried somewhere. I need to spend some time and pull it out. Uh, but for tonight, this will do. Still makes me smile. What I want to do with this is something a little different. Uh, folks are celebrating baseball cards and especially old baseball cards in all sorts of ways on the net and elsewhere these days. And one of the things I really admire are the people who have taken to reproducing baseball cards with their artistic talents. Now I have zero artistic talent. Um, but I thought it looked like fun to draw baseball cards that you love. I've seen several guys do it on Twitter, other places. So I thought I might give it a go. And what better place to start than with Cesar here. So I will give it a shot. And it's here for everyone to see. And then we'll see how bad it is. And remember, I told you I have very little artistic ability. So we'll just go from there. I won't even comment much on what I'm drawing other than to say at the outset here, it's going to be a little rough. It's okay. So, I don't know about you, but I began collecting baseball cards in, well, I, I got my first baseball cards, let's put it that way, in 1981 when my mom started bringing home packs, like rack packs I suppose they were, from the grocery store on her weekly trip instead of the customary uh, cheap little toys that she had brought in years prior. I wasn't any kind of a sports fan at that time, so I was quite disappointed uh, to see these cards come home instead of toys. So it looks like I'm drawing a little dog here instead of the Donner symbol. That's all right. Um, but even though I told her I didn't want the cards, she kept bringing the cards home. And so by the end of that year, I had a little box full. Um, and I had, she had done the same thing with football cards a few years, maybe starting in seven, 1979. I was a little more into those because my dad was a football fan. He was not, however, a baseball fan. Um, so anyway, I kind of liked the football cards. And by the end of 81, I had you know, quite a few, from, in my estimation, quite a few football cards. And then I had a... Uh, a box of baseball cards to go along with them. Um, disliking the baseball cards as I did and being the kid that I was, I had a tendency to take the cards and purposely fold them <laughs> in little stacks and see how much I could beat them up, see how much abuse they could take. They took a lot. It seems like I actually tore up the football cards a little more, right, because I loved them slightly more and uh, spent more time with them in general. Uh, anyhow, the next season, my mom was back at it. And so I had the hockey stick. 1982 Topps cards to go along with 
my baseball cap 1981 tops cards and both years I also had at least a few uh, from the other manufacturers so 1981 was the year that uh, Fleer finally broke Topps Monopoly after what was it a, like a five year uh, five year lawsuit I think it was sure it seemed like longer to the folks at Fleer maybe to Topps too but they won the right to produce baseball cards of current players for the 1981 season and they didn't just win the right they won a dollar <laughs> in an antitrust suit but not only did they win their suit the right to produce baseball cards and a dollar Fleer also won the right for other companies to produce baseball cards of current players so Don Ross jumped into the fray. Um, they had already been a non-sports card manufacturer for, I guess it was a couple of decades. I, I know they had done some things, some kind of kitschy things, like in the 60s maybe, the monkeys or something like that. Um, but they decided they were going to do baseball cards in 1981 along with Topps and Fleer and if you've seen the 1981 Donruss cards I assume you have since you're a baseball fan and you're watching this video then you know that the quality of those cards left something to be desired left almost everything to be desired <laughs> they were very the cards themselves were very thin um, in stock and uh, they had pretty bad photography very blurry and uh, they had very busy card backs. Now, I've heard over the years, and I have no reason to doubt this, but I'm not 100% sure, that Keith Olbermann wrote a lot of the prose on the card backs, which is, is fine. I think the prose was probably okay. There was just a lot of it um, at the expense of statistics and maybe other things that fans might have wanted to see. But anyhow, um, so, let's see, it was a pretty rough set, the Fleer was maybe slightly better, um, and then in 82, I actually thought the Fleer set was a little less nice than it was in 81. The cards were not quite as nice in 82 as they were in 81. However, I think Don Russ made a leap forward in 82 when they went from just this kind of stenciled border around their cards to um, a, a baseball theme with a baseball in one corner and a bat running from the baseball across the bottom with the player's name in it. it looked somewhat like you see with Mr. Sedano here in 83. 83 is very similar uh, in design to the 82 cards. The exception or the, the difference, main difference is that I had a glove now instead of the baseball. Um, so, anyway, so it kind of takes us to the design here in 83. Meanwhile, my mom was still buying me cards, 
to the grocery store. I wasn't, I still wasn't very interested in them. Still more of a football guy, but more than anything, I was like, I don't know, you know, a nine and ten year old nerdy type kid. Didn't know much about what was going on. Just starting to get into like popular music and things. I was into my Atari. Um, and then my Commodore 64, but that would come a little bit later. Um, in 82, didn't really look at baseball much. Not at all, actually. Then in 83, things started to change a little bit. Uh, some of my friends got interested in baseball cards. And my dad, although not a baseball fan, saw that I was, you know, accumulating a few cards. And I had a couple of games on when he was around. Just because we had, you know, whatever, four stations or something including the locals and so you kind of watched what you could watch um, back in those days didn't have hundreds of stations to choose from okay so I'm gonna I'm sure I'm gonna butcher his eyes here so I will make a comment comment on that he's very smiley even with his eyes good on you Cesar no wonder I like you so much um, but anyway, my dad wasn't a baseball fan, but he started telling me, since he was a sports fan, he had heard and kind of knew about the Reds from um, the 70s. We were, we were in, Indi in Indiana, so it's pretty much, so Cesar's going to look tired here, even though he looks smiley in real life. Um, so we were in Indiana, um, and so it was hard to avoid hearing about the Reds and the Big Red Machine in the 70s. They were really something. So my dad told me about some of the great players from the, the team uh, that he knew about. So he knew about Pete Rose. He'd heard a lot, a lot about him. He knew about... Johnny Bench, heard some about him. But the guy that really stuck out for my dad was uh, Joe Morgan. And so Morgan, of course, was uh, the MVP of the National League in both what, 1975 and 1976. Had some just monstrous seasons there, especially considering that he's just a little second baseman. Um, so let's go a little bit farther. He's got big old dimples, does Cesar. And so my dad knew that Joe Morgan was a really great player. And so he told me all about him. And as I said, he had mentioned uh, Johnny Bench, too. And as it so happened, and one of the times I had one of those games on in 83, I learned that Johnny Bunch was going to retire at the end of the season. So here I was, kind of seeing one of the Reds' grades at the very end of his career with the team. And I thought, well, you know, if I'm ever going to jump into this thing, this is probably the time to do it. And so I kind of started watching them, the Reds. They were on, yeah, quite a bit during the summer. So I've given Cesar kind of a... <laughs> kind of a scarred up face, maybe, and some, some busted teeth. <laughs> kind of getting there, though. Um... And so I watched the Reds, and as I watched the Reds, I started hearing about other players and started seeing other players as well. You know, and during that season, I learned about 
Mike Schmidt and how he had won a couple of MVP awards and how he was still kind of at the top of his game. And I believe I saw him play a couple times against the Reds. It didn't take too long before Schmidt became my favorite player. And, um, let's see. So kind of, kind of a zombie, uh, zombie Sedanio going on here. Anyway, so Schmidt became my favorite player that summer. I've got my proportions off a little bit. It's okay. The bat's a little droopy. Um, and so I was really happy when the Phillies won the National League East. And then from there, they went on to win the National League pennant over the Los Angeles Dodgers. And what was great about all that was that not only did I get to see my new favorite player, Mike Schmidt, play, but I also got to see some of the guys that my dad told me about. So we had um, Pete Rose on that Phillies team, and Joe Morgan on that Phillies team, and Tony Perez on that Phillies team. So they were the Wheeze kids in deference to the 1950 Phillies who were the Wiz kids. Oh, let's see. Do I want to attempt some of the seats back here? Sure, why not? So I really wanted the Phillies to win that World Series. They didn't. So I always have kind of a nightmare image in my head of Cal Ripken Jr. jumping up to, to nab that last out at shortstop. I think it was, was a Manny Trio that hit the, hit the line drive that Cal picked up. I think it was. So that's pretty bad, but that is my first baseball card masterpiece. And it looks like old Cesar Cedeno has been through the baseball wars, but he's still smiling, and that's why we love him. Anyway, thanks for watching me hack around on this baseball card drawing, and um, I will talk to you later. But in the meantime, you can find us at Waxpack Gods or on Twitter at Waxpack Gods. Thanks a lot.